We have become a people that put our Iman in a linguistic sense and wealth, as though it is the enabler of our time. However, in spite of great wealth, we see so many people who are bereft of the ability to do anything meaningful with that money. We see this especially amongst many of the professionals who are successful in the city. They earn great money, but are unable to save anything. It is as if their money is devoid of any barakah. But rizq is not only wealth, but also everything else that you have been blessed with in your life. From people, to assets, to nature, to the clean air you breathe, to everything luxurious you possess, materialistically, as well as intellectually and spiritually. Knowing and believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar razzaq the sustainer and the provider. He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only and the all source of rizq that there is. From the eyes that you're watching this with, to the laptop, phone you're watching this on, to the small pencil that lays unnoticed on your desk, all is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your promotion at work is not in the hands of your boss, but in his subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. Your boss might be just the means of getting it to you. No one believed that all the rizq comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We now move on to the methods that will increase our blessings, our rizq for us in this world and the next. Number one, doing much istighfar being humble and acknowledging your sins before Allah thereby seeking repentance istighfar is a highly merited act of worship in Islam it holds an eminent power for us as believers seeking the all-powerful when we crumble and fall again and again not only does it remove our sins if we are sincere in our intentions but it also becomes a means of ease and blessing for us. Ibn Abbas said, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, if anyone constantly seeks pardon from Allah, Allah will appoint for him a way out of every distress and a relief from every anxiety and will provide sustenance for him from where he expects not. Number two, keeping the ties of kinship. This, I feel, has become one of the most difficult things to attain in our times. With so much unwarranted busy schedule of our life, we have forgotten the sunnah altogether or don't really understand its importance. Visiting our relatives, keeping good relations with them, is vital to the social structure of Islam. Today, it is easy to break the ties than to keep them. And there are good and bad relations everywhere. I understand that. Not all people are alike and good. That's natural. But you seek out the good in others and ignore the faults they have. The aunt of yours who badmouth you. The uncle was never anything good to say to you. It would seem normal to keep away from them. But instead, try being more forgiving and maintaining the ties not for them not for your needs but only to please your Rabb expect nothing from them no goodness nothing in return and expect your reward only from him subhanahu wa ta'ala it makes it a lot easier to handle the negative people in your life narrated Anas bin Malik I heard Allah's messenger peace be upon him saying whoever desires an expansion in his sustenance and age should keep good relations with his kith and kin. Number three, if you want more, give more. Yeah, you heard it right. That is how it is with our beautiful deen. 
when you give more of your rizq in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He subhanahu wa ta'ala promises to bless you more with it. The more you spend in His way, the more you shall receive, inshaAllah. Therefore, always be charitable. Spend from whatever you have, your wealth, food, clothes, talents, skills, anything that you can help others with for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is charity. The more you spend, the more you receive. The likeness of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is as the likeness of a grain of corn. It grows seven ears, and each ear has a hundred grains. Allah gives manifold increase to whom He pleases, and Allah is all sufficient for His creatures' needs, all knower. The importance of helping others in any way you can is reflected so beautifully in this hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, who reported Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, as saying, He who alleviates the suffering of a brother out of the suffering of the world, Allah would alleviate his suffering from the sufferings of the day of resurrection. And he who finds relief for one who is hard pressed, Allah would make things easy for him in the hereafter. And he who conceals the faults of a Muslim, Allah would conceal his faults in the world and in the hereafter. Allah is at the back of a servant so long as the servant is at the back of his brother. And he who treads the path in search of knowledge, Allah would make that path easy, leading to paradise for him. And these persons who assemble in the house among the houses of Allah and recite the book of Allah and they learn and teach the Quran among themselves, there would descend upon them tranquility and mercy would cover them and the angels would surround them. And Allah mentions them in the presence of those near him. And he who is slow paced in doing good deeds, his high lineage doesn't make him go ahead. Make dua, whatever you need, money, food, clothes, good scores, patience, wisdom, ask for it. Make dua. We are asked to supplicate to Allah, even for the shoelace. That is the power of dua. Be sincere, have tawakkul, and ask Him for increase in your rizq. Make sure you ask for halal rizq and not the haram sustenance to be increased. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us what is only good for us in our deen, dunya, and akhirah. Ameen. Recite the following dua upon rising in the morning. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'an wa rizqan tayyiban wa amalan mutaqabbalan. Meaning, O oh Allah, I ask you for knowledge that is of benefit, a good provision, and deeds that will be accepted. Next, let's get married and have children. Today, because we made marrying so difficult for ourselves, it looks like we would rather be better off without marrying and having children. Most of the couples prefer to have one or two children, excusing themselves by rationalizing the ever-increasing expenses that they come with. However, the affairs of a believer are not so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written the rizq of everyone, even before He created us. If you think like you can't support your wife and three or four children, you're absolutely right, you can't. Because it is Allah who will support and provide for them. They are a rizq to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they all come with their own rizq as well. Allah will support and provide for them. You don't have to worry about that. He subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for you through them. Making them a means to increase your rizq as well. Trust Him subhanahu wa ta'ala on that. And marry those among you who are single. That is a man who has no wife and the woman who has no husband. And also marry the salihun, pious, fit, and capable ones. 
If they be poor, Allah will enrich them out of his bounty. And Allah is all sufficient for his creatures' needs, all knowing about the state of the people. And slay not your children for fear of poverty. We provide for them and for you. Surely the slaying of them is a great sin. Five, be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided you with everything. After all your shortcomings, He subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you and blesses you with more and more every day. He subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves all the praise and gratitude from you. Not that He subhanahu wa ta'ala needs it, for He subhanahu wa ta'ala is above all such needs. But in this too lies His mercy for us, the creation. If we thank Him more, praise Him more, He subhanahu wa ta'ala promises to bless us more. How can we miss out on such a profitable deal? And remember, when your Lord proclaimed, if you give thanks by accepting faith and worshiping none but Allah, I will give you more of my blessings. But if you are thankless, that is disbelievers, verily my punishment is indeed severe. Number six, having tawakkul and fearing Allah. Having faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for you and holding fast onto the rope of righteousness with this faith will suffice you in every difficulty and poverty. Also, not taking the haram means to increasing your rizq is another important aspect you should remember. Always be mindful and fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always remember, He knows everything you say and you do. He is all aware, the all-knowing. Nothing is hidden from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay away from falling into the forbidden acts of riba and riya, just to increase your rizq. You never know what you think is a blessing now, might become a curse later on. Therefore, always stay away from haram. Be content with what you have. Have patience and trust Allah to reward you for that in this world, and if not here, then definitely in the next. And whosoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, he will make a way for him to get out of every difficulty, and he will provide him from sources he could never imagine. And whoever puts his trust in Allah, then he will suffice him. Verily, Allah will accomplish his purpose. Indeed, Allah has set a measure for all things. Some of us are blessed with more, while some are blessed with less. Don't get jealous or envious, or worst, curse your life or fate. It is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended it to be, to test us. When we have more, we are tested with how to dispose of it. In what use we put the blessings, we are accountable for every penny that we spend. When we have less, He subhanahu wa ta'ala tests our patience, how gratefulness to Him in all situations, and how content we are. These are the tests we undergo every day of our lives. Sometimes we remember, while most of the times we forget. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being heedless. Ameen. In either case, one should remember that our life and everything in it are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we return back to Him, the wealth that we hoarded here, by whichever means, will be left behind here. And all that we would be taking with us are our deeds and accounts of how we spend of them. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who will receive their book of records in their right hand. To make us among those who are patient and content with what they have. To make us strong enough to resist the temptations of this dunya that is temporary goodness. And to help us all focus on the akhirah, which is the eternal bliss.